What's up? Today we're going to talk a little bit about achieving your New Year's resolutions in 2019. So you might have set some goals, you might not have. We're about a week or two into the New Year now and we see that this is kind of the time where that initial motivation starts to fade and we're at risk of kind of falling off the wagon. Things could go either way. If you are working on something then feel free to let me know down below in the comments. So even if you haven't set a resolution, these tips can be applied to any goal or target you're working towards any time of the year and kind of in any area of your life, whether it's with work or fitness or your diet. Before we dig into the five tips, if you want to kind of take things to the next level with your habits, with productivity and just life in general this year. There's a link in the description box below to the best year yet super bundle. So this is a collection of more than 25 resources, ebooks, courses that are geared towards helping you achieve your goals, whether that's in business, health, life in general, whatever you're passionate about. It's available for the next few days. It's down below if you want to check it out and let's get into the video. The first thing to think about is our why. So statistics is a word I always struggle to say, but they also show that more than 90% of people fail with their New Year's resolutions. I think it's within about six weeks. I think a lot of that comes down to the fact that we don't necessarily really think about why we're making the change in the first place. So a lot of the time we see someone who's doing a certain thing, that might be a friend or someone on social media, and they seem to be having a certain outcome that we deem to be valuable or positive. So that could be any number of things. It could be someone eats a certain diet and they look a certain way or they seem to be happy. Or someone does a certain workout plan or claim to take a certain supplement and they have the body that you kind of aspire towards. Subconsciously we put two and two together and we think that must equal that and before we know it we're trying to be the same as them. So with this kind of impulsive change we get this initial surge of motivation. We kind of mindlessly jump in but within a few weeks maybe a month or so things start to get quite tough and we kind of realize that we didn't really want to do this in the first place. We end up packing things in and we're back where we started. So a better method perhaps would be to really think about why we want to make a change before we make the decision to kind of embark upon it because change is it's quite a big thing to make. Our initial response is to kind of resist change. To make a change stick, it's got to be something that we're really passionate about. So asking yourself why, and even writing it down, asking yourself four or five times, why do I want to make this change? And why is that? And why is that? If you can't really come up with a substantial answer to all those whys, then does it mean that you should be embarking on that change right now? In some cases, the answer is still yes. Like you might have this deep calling within you and you just want to do this and you don't really know why. But nine times out of 10, if we can be a bit more mindful and, and kind of hone in on our reasons why, then we're going to have much greater chances of succeeding and actually creating a life that we are really passionate about as opposed to just trying to be similar to someone else. Next thing is our what. By this I mean what are you specifically trying to achieve or change? So oftentimes the more specific we can be with a goal or a target, the easier it is to, to kind of set a plan to achieve that. So it's much easier to work towards building say five bodyweight push-ups than it is to just work towards the goal of being a bit stronger. This kind of brings me to another common mistake that I've made and I've seen other people make and that's trying to achieve too many changes or too many goals at once. So you can think about habits as spinning plates and the more plates that we try to spin, the less successful we're gonna be. Like it's not too hard to spin one plate. I don't think I could spin a plate, but apparently it's not too hard. If you're trying to do two, that's a bit harder. Three, you got two hands. So the more plates we add, the harder it's gonna be, the less likely we are to succeed. We kind of dilute our efforts. Humans, we're not really good at multitasking. Kind of drain, it just drains our willpower and we don't make any progress towards any of the goals. Classic example is with movement. If you're trying to achieve your pull-ups and your handstand and your deadlift and run a 5K at a certain pace, then you're probably not gonna be able to achieve all of those goals at once. Whereas if you put some of those skills on kind of maintenance mode, just do a little bit, and focus on one or two main goals, then you're much more likely to succeed with them. Focus on that one thing or two things 
really throw yourself into it. And then when you get to a level that you're comfortable with and you're happy with, then think about moving on to something else perhaps. Next thing to think about is our when. So if we're setting a goal or working towards a resolution, it's important to have a time frame in mind that's kind of realistic. So we often want things yesterday on that weight loss overnight. It doesn't mean you have to be super specific with your time frame. Like I don't really like setting really specific time frames if I'm working on a movement skill. I'll have a goal that I know I'm going to be working on for say three months at a time. And then it's kind of more about the process and what I can learn from the process as opposed to just being focused on the end result all the time. If you're looking to perform a daily habit like meditation every day or eating healthy breakfast every day. It can often be helpful to set a specific time during that day so you kind of have a trigger and that's going to help you be more consistent with the habit which is what's going to make a big difference in the long run. The next thing I want to think about is who. So by this I mean who are you going to turn to to be accountable or to keep you accountable. So if things get difficult what support systems are you going to have in place to try and keep you on track and if you fail do you have a backup plan that's going to kind of support you through. So for certain changes having an accountability partner can really help. It could be a spouse, a friend, just to, to kind of give you some advice or, or just give you a little bit of a moral support as you work through the difficult parts of the change. It can even be someone online who's working towards a similar change or has been through a similar change. Just asking for help basically. So making change on your own is doable but I think a lot of the time if we drop the ego and allow ourselves to be a bit more vulnerable and ask for help, then we're going to succeed a lot more. And you can also help other people work through changes as well. So if you do fall off track and you tend towards that negative self-talk, beating yourself up, calling yourself a failure, it's maybe worth re-examining your relationship with failure. So instead of seeing it as this end of the line, we've, we've messed up, we're back where we started, think about it as a learning experience and, and what can we learn from this failure and how can we use that to succeed next time. Last but not least, how are you going to embark on this journey? So you're going to jump in and set a 30 or 60 day challenge. Are you going to kind of slow down, take a step back and work towards a, a big goal but take it in small steps? And how are you going to measure your progress? These are all kind of important things to consider. So most of us just want to jump in and make changes overnight and have everything yesterday as I said. I want to completely rehaul our diet or go straight from couch to 5k. If that's something you've maybe tried in the past and it hasn't worked out that well for you, it's maybe time to take a step back and, and reevaluate that method. So maybe small daily goals or weekly goals might be more suitable instead. So with food you might just alter your breakfast for a week and then when you're comfortable with that alter your lunch meal as well for a week. And then just gradually over time you start to transform your diet that way. It's not this massive big scary change that is really difficult to manage on top of all the other stress and stuff in life. So this is the process that I would use when I'm setting a goal or working towards something. It's also what I use with clients that I work with. So to really get the benefits from it I would recommend that you write all this down. So write down your reason why, write down specifically what you're trying to achieve, time frame, how you're going to stay kind of accountable and the approach that you're going to take. So you can also use a diary to, to track your progress as well. Remember if you want extra resources, you want to dig a little bit deeper into goal setting and habit changing and productivity, your best year yet super bundle is down below. Uh, it's available for the next few days I think. So yeah, it might be worth checking out. There's some really good resources in there. Hope this was helpful in some shape or form. I uh, hope I'm just being rambling and well, it was, so give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it, if you did get a little bit of benefit from it. Let me know if you're working on something down below and what it is you're working on. And yeah, Ooh, broke the chair. Catch you soon.